This video is part two of my mini series on bit manipulation. Basically, we are trying to understand how do you represent numbers in bits and in computer memory? How do you manipulate upon them? And how do you perform some of the very basic logical operations? Up till now, we have discussed how can you convert decimal to binary, binary to decimal, and how can you perform all of the logical operations like AND, WAR, and an exclusive OR. So if all of this seems very new to you, I would highly recommend you to check out my previous videos first before proceeding ahead. Because in this particular video, we are going to start off exactly where we left, the exclusive WAR operator and what problems you can solve. After that, we are going to actually see how you can manipulate the bits, how you can shift the bits to get other numbers as well. So without further ado, let's get started. You might have heard about this famous problem in a lot of different places. Basically, you are given two numbers and you have to swap them, but you cannot use a third variable. The traditional method to solve such a problem is you take a temporary variable C and assign it the value of B. Then you assign B to A and then you again assign A to C. So this is how you have swapped both the numbers. But now you have a constraint that you cannot use a temporary variable. What do you do in that case? Well, we just talked about the exclusive OR operator. And you might be very amazed how this exclusive OR operator can help you to swap the numbers. Before that, we need to keep in mind the fundamental concepts of an exclusive OR operator. Basically, if you do the exclusive OR on the same number, you get the result of zero. And any number, if you do an exclusive OR with zero, you will get the number itself. This is the fundamental concept which we are going to use in our proof and by which we will be able to swap our numbers. So what do we do over here? First of all, we are given with these two numbers, right? We start off by saying that A is equal to A or B. Now you don't have to worry about the values. We are just going to look at the proof. So you start off like this. Now A is something else. We are not worried what it will be. It is all happening with the bits. I am just saying that A is now equal to A or B. Okay. For the next step, what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say is B is also equal to A or B. Now, what is this doing over here? Try to substitute the value of A. Remember that you have changed A. So substitute this value. So once I do this, I'm going to write down A or of B and then or of B. So what is this giving me? I am getting A or B or B. And what do we know? We know that any number if sort by itself will give me zero. And I am doing something similar over here, right? I am doing B or B. So the eventual result will be A or of zero. And now we can take the advantage of our second rule. Any number when sort with zero will give me the number itself. So when I do this A or zero, I get A. So what has just happened? I have already swapped B with the value of A. Notice B has now become A, whatever was the value of A. We are not worried about the actual stuff, correct? However, you still have to fix the value of A. That should point to B, correct? So what I'm going to now say is, I'm going to say once again, A is equal to A or of B. And now what happens? Try to substitute the values again. What is the value of B? From our previous operations, B is now pointing to A. So I can write down A or of A. But this value of A had also changed. Remember when we did A equal to A or B. So now this actually becomes A or of B and then or of A. So what is this giving me now? It is actually giving me A or of A or of B. I have A or of A. And when I am zoring two same numbers, what do I get? I get a zero. So this gives me 0 or of B and 0 or of B is actually B. So I have now swapped two values. A is now pointing at B and B is now pointing at A. So just using this exclusive or operator, I was able to swap both of the numbers and I didn't even take the help of a third variable. This problem is really, really important. 
and you might find it in telephonic interviews as well. And how does it work? The underlying idea just remains the same. Any number when sorted with itself gives you a zero, and any number when sorted with zero gives you the number itself. It is very similar to how we took advantage of finding the unique number in an array when all the other numbers were duplicated. This is how exclusive sort helps you a lot. And up till this point, all we have done is we are playing around with bits and we are performing all of these logical operations on them. But we never actually talk about these numbers itself. You might have noticed that when I represented a decimal number in binary, I get all of these bits available, correct? Now try to think what would happen if I shift these bits. And this introduces you to the concept of a left shift and a right shift. Primarily, you have two shift operators available. That is the left shift and the right shift. Now, how do they work? Let us take up a sample number. Let us take up the number 19. And how do you represent 19 when it comes to bits? I can write down 19 as 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1. This is how I represent the number 19. Now, what does shifting actually mean? You can take up the literal meaning. Basically, you have all of these numbers and then you shift it. So how can you shift it? If you shift all of these numbers to the left just by one place, what happens? These numbers got shifted and in this empty location, basically what happens is you will get a zero over here. So the entire scenario changes. Basically, what I did is I said 19 a left shift of 1. That means I shifted my number 19 with one shift. So this is now a totally new number. In fact, if you convert it to decimal, this is actually 38. So what did we just do? Just by doing one shift, my number just multiplied by 2. I have now a bigger number. Similarly, what if you shift it by two places? This was my original number and I shift it by one place and then I shift it by two places. As soon as I shift it by two places, my new number becomes something like this. In fact, this is a much larger number. So I can say 19 left shift of 2 will actually give me 76. This is the binary representation of 76. And this is what a left shift actually means. Similarly, you have right shift also. I have the same number available 19 and let us say I say 19 and do a right shift by 1. So again take it in a literal manner. I have this entire number and then I will shift it to the right by one place. I take this number and I shift it by one place. Now what happens when you shift it? If you notice one of the bits it has fallen apart. What I can say is this bit fell off. So I'm gonna completely forget about it. It will be as if this bit never existed. So what actually happened? This entire number now changed. And this number is now actually 9. So if you think about it, all of these operations do not make sense when you just look at it. For example, if you say 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, 3 minus 5 is equal to minus 2. All of these things make sense. But when you just look at all of these bitwise operations, they will not make sense to you in the first place. Like 19 with a right shift of 1. How is it giving you a 9? You just didn't remove this 1. You first converted it to binary. Then you did one shift to the right. And then you converted it back to the decimal. So if you want to do it all of it on your own, then it is a very lengthy process. But with computers, when you do this right shift operator, all of this happens in memory and it is very, very fast. Now, instead of a one shift, if I had done something like this, 19 with a right shift of two, then what would have happened? One more number would have fallen off and the result would have been four. Once again, I would like to iterate upon the fact that when you look at these bitwise operations, if you're looking at just these, it may not make sense to you that how can you even come up with this? But you need to understand what is happening. For example, when you do a left shift by one, you are basically multiplying the number by two. 
Similarly, when you are doing a right shift by 1, you are basically dividing the number by 2. So, all of this actually helps you to write better, faster and efficient programs. I have seen it in a lot of comments and even on lead code that people will try to post the same algorithm with the same time complexity, but there will be certain solutions which are faster and certain solutions which are slower. I am sure it depends upon the language as well. But if you are using the same language, there is also a high chance that your solution won't be the fastest. What is actually happening over here? Well, this is where the magic of bitwise operations happen. Any place that you were multiplying, if you had used bitwise operators, your operations would have been faster. So bitwise operators actually help you to write very fast, efficient and memory compatible programs. Now, I would like to stop this particular video right over here because I want that your fundamentals about all of the logical operators, especially the ZOR operator, they should be solid. And you should be also understanding how is the left shift and the right shift operator actually working. Because in my next video, what we're going to do is we are going to actually look at these bits. We are going to try to toggle bits. We are going to try to set a bit. We are going to clear a bit and we are also going to check that, okay, what is the last set bit? And all of that will use all of these shift operators. Basically, what I want you to think is what happens when you do one left shift of two? What is that giving you? And what is the binary representation of this? What happens when I do one left shift of five? What is the result do you get? And what is the binary representation of it? I want you to look at the bit level and try to understand what would happen if I take these numbers and then apply these logical operations on a given input number. That is where the magic happens and that is where you are going to see all the efficient solutions come into play. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you don't miss the upcoming video. Before we go there, I would like to know what other problems have you seen where the exclusive ZOR operator came in very, very handy. Tell me in the comment section below and it is going to become a really good collection of all such problems. I'd be happy to discuss all of that with you and also let me know if you're facing any problems by understanding how these bits are actually working. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Also remember that now you can schedule a one-to-one -one session with me and we can discuss about almost anything. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.